All right, pomegranate lovers, this is Ross and welcome to one of my pomegranate videos. In today's video, we're gonna talk about growing pomegranates in shorter season climates, cold climates, growing them in containers, and also talking about growing them in the ground in cold places. Basically, we're gonna cover a lot of things that I don't think people are fully aware of about pomegranates and how and where, especially, you can grow them. I have two really exciting pieces of news. Um, a lot of you guys have been following some of the pomegranate videos and other fruits that I grow here in the Philadelphia area. The pomegranate has been one that has eluded me for many years. Finally, we have here on my Sumbar tree, which is in a 10 gallon size pot, it has fruited quite a few pomegranates, especially for the size of the tree. Uh, it's now though, and it's probably its fifth season and it's taken quite a long time. I've had to learn a number of lessons over the years that I'm gonna discuss with you. But nonetheless, we have some really nice pomegranates on here that I'm expecting good things from. The other nice piece of news is that my in-ground Salavatsky tree, which we'll look at towards the end of this video, that has done exceptional. Now entering its fourth season, uh, it has flowered profusely this spring and has actually fruited and probably will ripen before frost, I'm hoping will ripen before frost, roughly about eight or nine pomegranates. That's really exciting news for a lot of us in colder places because that tree has been as low as two degrees Fahrenheit so far. I've said this for years that I have friends in actually zone six Bs who have successfully uh, fruited and are successfully growing a Salavatsky pomegranate. So this is great news for a lot of us out there. You can grow them in containers and you can grow them in the ground as well, even in colder places. You have to choose the right variety. What I love about Sumbar is that it's actually the earliest, a lot of collectors will tell you, it's the earliest soft seeded pomegranate. There's hard seeded and there's soft seeded. The soft seeds are typically gonna be easier to eat. When you crunch into those seeds, it's uh, not as hard on your teeth and typically they're more pleasurable to eat. Um, I'm finding that this variety is quite productive. Uh, it's also quite hardy. I will be interested to try it and plant it in the ground at some point if I can propagate uh, one of these trees. But also I find that growing them in containers has its own set of challenges. So let's talk about that really quickly. First and foremost, I think these pomegranates need a larger container. Um, they need at least a 15 gallon size or 20 gallon size pot. I think that's suitable for them. They can be in that size I find for a long time. This um, Sunbar has been in a 10 gallon size grow pot like indefinitely it seems like for its whole life. And I don't think it's gonna ever really stop. However, the tree is not as healthy as I would like it to be, especially at this point of the year. It's fruiting. The fruits are now turning red and the arrows are actually red on the inside. And so at this point, you definitely need all the sugar content you can. And so if my tree has got a lot of these low uh, yellowing leaves here, as we get into the fall, uh, it's not getting the same photosynthesis that it need and had earlier in the spring and the summer. So I need to take a better care of this particular tree. Putting it in a larger pot, having good soil is really critical. Having good soil moisture consistently and also being on top of feeding it. Now that I know that this is more doable and actually I would say very doable in a container, um, they're actually gonna put out a decent amount of fruit as well. Uh, I'm gonna put way more attention into these pomegranates. I also think one big tip just to get them with the fruit a little bit earlier is just do a, a bit of summer pruning they are not gonna fruit in that first or second year like you would see in a fig tree. It's unfortunate, um, but it is what it is. Uh, I think in that year three or four, if you do some summer pruning, the pomegranates do flower and form on spurs. So you need older wood and that those spurs like on apples and pears take some time to actually form. So the best thing to do that I would find is, is just changing the hormones through summer pruning. Uh, Here's some fruits actually. I harvested about four fruits off of the Sumbar so far. They are very small. Not only are they small, but they don't look very good. They, they did look a bit better last week when I did harvest these. I wanted to see if they were ready. Now, the skin was red. Uh, these are the first pomegranates of any substance that I've harvested off of any of the trees so far. Uh, Open them up, very good. Very surprised to see that the arrows were also red. So the skin was red and the arrows are red. However, tasted these and the arrows are red, but they're not sweet. This leads me back to the health part of this and that the tree just is not very healthy, is not able to pump out those carbohydrates from photosynthesis. 
to pump them into the fruits. The, also, the question of thinning fruits has always been, I've always wondered with this, uh, these pomegranates. And it seems like to me, you will need to thin out the fruits. I do have a pomegranate back here, which by the way, you should remove with pruning shears. This is another really small one that hasn't turned color yet. And the thing with this one is that it's so small and there were so many, there was probably close to 11 or 10 on this tree in total that you're just not able to produce enough carbohydrates to have actually sweet fruit. I've seen it in all fruits. It doesn't, the pomegranate really doesn't seem to be any different. This was a shock to me and that it actually was able to produce more fruits than the tree actually could handle. That's historically not been a problem. Now opening this up, you will see that the arrows inside actually are red. And that's, that is um, a bit surprising considering the skin is actually not even really red just yet. So there's still a lot more to learn. I still have a lot more to discover with these. Let me taste one. So, you know, it, it, it reminds me so much when I'm eating it of a pomegranate, but it's just not sweet. And you can taste a little bit of that pomegranate flavor, that nice berry flavor, but you're just not getting the sweetness. So that's the mistake I think this year. Um, consistent watering has been my uh, particular problem in the past. And so that's something that I'm just gonna focus on in the future going forward, putting them into larger pots. I handle them the same way I handle a fig in a container. Uh, it's really no different. Just keep them above 15 degrees Fahrenheit in the wintertime, store them properly, and you will actually get inevitably some really nice pomegranates. One of the problems I've had in the past is actually getting the flowers to pollinate. Uh, it seemed like to me I was having an issue with just the lack of pollination a lack of whatever pollinator that comes in here and pollinates these, that doesn't appear to be the case anymore. Um, I tried even self-pollinating pomegranates in other videos that I've done. The one big trick with any in-ground pomegranate uh, that you can relate to with the containers is just consistent soil moisture. And that really just comes down to mulch. Uh, so adding mulch is gonna allow that soil to be healthier with more life. The trees are gonna get bigger and more established quicker and you're gonna have that consistent soil moisture that you look for. The other nice thing and something I will probably do going forward is that summer pruning that I mentioned. All right, fruit lovers, this is Ross. Today we have some very exciting news to share with you guys. I finally have my first ripe pomegranates from my own pomegranate tree. That by the way, is planted in the ground. It's the tree back there on my left behind me that's turning yellow. Just before it turned yellow, it produced these beautiful pomegranates that taste incredible, by the way. This is the variety called Salavatsky. It is a Russian variety that is very hardy, and I am growing pomegranates here in the Philadelphia area. I'm in zone 7A, which means we regularly get down to zero degrees Fahrenheit, and this tree behind me has been through already a two degree Fahrenheit low and did not take any damage whatsoever. So this is extremely great. This is very good news for any grower out there that wants to know the pomegranate hardiness zone, how far you can push it, what zone you can grow pomegranates in. This variety here seems to be quite reliable. In fact, it's not only just me in my yard, I have about three or four different friends that are growing this exact variety not only in the Philadelphia area, but also in zone 6B in Bethlehem and also in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So this is an incredible variety. I have to say uh, they're a bit small this year. Maybe that's gonna be the case going forward. They also split. That kind of was the indication to let me know that they were ready. But these arrows in here taste amazing. I've, by the way, I love pomegranates. Um, I, it's one of my favorite fruits. It's always been one of my favorite fruits. Every fall, I go to an Asian market and buy 20 to 30 pomegranates every year. I make a special trip to drive 40 minutes to go to this Asian market just so I can have pomegranates. I store them in my fridge. They keep for a long time because I know that these pomegranates are so good for me. Not only do they uh, taste amazing, but they have some incredible antioxidants, polyphenols, the fiber in the seeds. 
it all feeds your acromancia municifilia in your gut. And to me, uh, I get the same amazing feeling after eating a pomegranate. I get the same feeling in June when I'm out here in my backyard like a deer grazing on all my different fruiting plants. I get at that point like 10 or 15 different fruits to fruit at one time. And I just eat fruits by the handful. And I'm telling you, those antioxidants, those fibers in there, they all feed your gut and make you feel great. So for me, I'm so excited to have this amazing fall fruit at a time where you don't really get many fruits like this. I'm getting some muscadines right now. You get some pawpaws that, that ripened for me probably about actually a month ago. I'm getting a lot of persimmons at this point. Um, there are some other fall fruits, like I'm actually getting citrus right now in containers. But to me, this is uh, absolutely my favorite in this current moment. And I cannot wait to have a tree next year that produces even more. And uh, of course, many pomegranates in the years to come. So let me talk to you guys a little bit about, uh, well, let's, you know, let me taste the arrows, by the way. To me, they, you know, you know, they say that um, Salavatsky is a hard seeded pomegranate. To me, the arrows and the seeds inside are really not much harder than than wonderful. Um, I don't find it intrusive in any way. In fact, my muscadine seeds, the seeds in a muscadine grape, excuse me, or a scuppernong grape are harder than this. Uh, the seeds that you'll find in a Concord grape, if it's seeded, are also harder than this. Uh, um, and to me, I don't think they're much different than the variety wonderful that we all have access to at the grocery store. So I actually find the acid sweet balance is perfect. I find that there's an incredible berry flavor that's actually more intense and better than you'll find in a wonderful variety that you get at the store. So to me, these are these are just actually better than what I, what I can get at the store, which I was completely surprised because they split open number one, but also number two, I'm in a humid climate and pomegranates are meant to be grown in dry and warm climates. I have the opposite. It's cold and it's also very humid here. Excuse a lot of that noise back there, guys. Someone's cutting down a tree and the chipper's putting all the mulch in the, um, through the chipper. So yeah, I'm thoroughly impressed with these. The, the fruit quality came out perfect. They're very sweet. They have a nice berry flavor. To me, this is amazing. Now to talk a little bit about the tree is that this tree, believe it or not, in the spring flowered profusely. There was flowers all over this thing. Uh, there wasn't as many towards the back on the shadier side of the tree because you can see it's planted right up against the house. We are in the southern exposure here, but we don't get a ton of sunlight. Uh, believe it or not, we only get maybe five or six hours of light during the growing season. Even right now, it's much less. So you can get away with growing pomegranates, believe it or not, in a shadier spot. I don't recommend it. Um, I would get more pomegranates, I imagine, if I had more sunlight. These fig trees here that I have, one planted right in front of it, and also three or four to the left, uh, to the right of it, is definitely shading it. And uh, you know, if I had more sunlight, a better location, I'd be much better off. What is a nice benefit, and if you're gonna grow them in colder zones, plant them against your house, plant them against the structure. Uh, that's gonna definitely give them a little bit of extra thermodynamic heating in the winter time so they can get through that really cold temperature that you guys might see in the winter time. Um, other than that, I find that the pomegranates flower on spurs. So in terms of pruning them, don't recommend pruning them much because the spurs that are formed, and in fact, you'll notice when you pick them off the tree, they're coming off of spurs. Um, now, whether or not those spurs form on the current year wood or the new growth, I should say, they are definitely coming from growth that forms from last year. So you have to preserve wood from last year to get the spurs. It seems like to me, the spurs are a little different than other trees that you might think of, uh, like an apple tree or a pear tree. I'm curious to see if the spurs continue and last. If the spurs exist on the tree and they keep fruiting and flowering from those spurs, then that'll be amazing. Um, and you'd wanna watch out for the spurs and not to prune them away. But what it seems like to me is happening is that the new growth that forms from last year, like you would find on a mulberry tree or even a peach tree, the flowers are there on the wood from last year or a fig actually when you have your brava crop. 
So you have to preserve that wood from last year to get flowers and then to get fruit. Pollination, it seems to be a whole different separate issue that to me seems to be a bit of a mystery. Um, it definitely seemed like they were getting pollinated from different bugs. But again, I only had about four or five pomegranates that actually ripened. Um, I had hundreds, about a hundred flowers probably on this tree. It's in its third or fourth season, I think, since we planted it. Um, and I had probably about eight fruits on the tree, but now I'm only down to about four or five. So I don't know where the other three went. Um, that's a bit disappointing. Maybe the birds got them. I know in the past birds have eaten these pomegranates, specifically the cat birds. But that's basically it right there about growing pomegranates in colder climates. And just in general, some tips on growing pomegranates. To me, this variety here, Salabotsky, is amazing. Check it out. I thank you guys for watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button so that other people can be aware that you can grow pomegranates in colder places. Thank you guys. We'll see you for the next one.